Hey, so if you're watching this on YouTube, we have started uploading it just a little bit later in the day. So maybe like 7 a.m. Central, maybe 8 a.m. Central. We're just trying to work with the YouTube algorithm. So that's why you're seeing it later. We're not forgetting to upload. Thanks for watching. Bye. stifling my creative genius mm, genius huh mm. yeah i was going for a like uh fat guy from mr deeds pronunciation genius 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 hmm. oh not a big deeds head over there no i i actually really liked mr deeds but I, yeah. I guess it's just been so long since i've seen it i don't know what you're talking about thoughts i've only seen it in passing i only remember the frostbite scene Oh, that was a good one. Actually, Mr. Deeds is one of the few Adam Sandler movies that I like. Okay, this is crazy. Literally before coming over here, I just saw they announced Little Nicky 2. Why? Oh, shit. No, you're thinking of Little Ricky's to Nicky 2. No, it's Little Nicky 2 coming to Netflix in May. That's wild. Why? I Why did, do we need that? I did also enjoy Little Nicky. <laughs> when I was growing up, I never watched the like big Sandlers. Neither did I. But I liked Little Nicky and I liked Mr. Deeds a lot. I liked Mr. Deeds a lot, for sure. And you know, Grown Ups isn't that bad of a film. Here's the mm. problem. And you guys are going to hate to hear this. All of his movies are good. Uh, all of them are we sure name a bad one hot tub time machine <laughs> wrong <laughs> actually i, don't I, think I haven't seen that. it uh, that might not be adam sandler oh he for sure you're thinking it. a click you think no, he, for sh- he for sure produces <laughs> such a funny like <laughs> i really liked click click's a great film i liked click a lot now, anywho boys girls and non-binary folk welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet my name is josh my name is Rick. And my name is Christian. And we are the, the Judges. Back in Swifty than ever. Are we? Yeah. Uh, are we? Yeah. I thought we're off of Swift and on to... Renee Rapp? Yeah. Yeah. I've I been meaning to wear this since February, since the Super Bowl when I was gifted it. Uh, it is a... Is that when you wore that? Because I was like, I know I've seen you wear this, but yeah. where would you have worn this to? Yeah, my own Super Bowl party. Yeah. It is a a shirt that is all of the covers of albums of Taylor Swift's albums. I don't know who that is. Interesting. That's crazy. It's insane back uh, pedal that you've done here. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know who that is. But from the looks of the album art, I would probably really like her music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> T.S. Born in 1989. No idea who that could be. I don't think I have any issues on how she uses her private jet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we um, we do stand Renee Rapp entirely. We Coming out that. using her I platform. genuinely don't know who that is. Oh, really? I've really. This is insane. I don't, the name is not familiar to I've me. I've heard of her twice now. There's the one time on SNL and this latest video that you just tweeted. How are you? She's like all over like lesbian TikTok. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not on it. She was, we stop at by wife TikTok. <laughs> she was on, uh, she was Regina George in Mean Girls. Uh, that just came out. Uh, that's that's yes. why she's blowing up. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but she's she, like kind of controversial a little bit. No. The one video I remember about, maybe it's not the same girl, but was just like say whatever the fuck was on the top of her mind during interviews, and it would I just mean, be like off this could the be cuff her. shit. Yes, that is Renee Rapp, but I don't think she said anything problematic. She actually said really cool, sick fucking shit. Oh, okay. But yeah, she's cool. just one of those. So early in the episode, she's just one of those people who just her energy that she protrudes is just hot. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, she just has the it factor. She's just one of those people. Okay. Unfortunately, I think that's called Riz. So TikTok goes crazy over. But she tweeted about, or she made a statement at a, some award show about calling for an immediate ceasefire. So that's pretty sick of her. Love that. Yeah. Love that. For I do love that. Rap. I forgot to grab mail. That's okay. I went, to the, um, I went to the PO Box today because I had. Did you do the thing? I had to sign for something. Okay, good. They don't have it. Excuse me? I was like, hey, I'm here to sign for this. I got this thing, and there's something for me to sign. They were like, for Highsmith? And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, that's my business partner. And they were like, oh, let me look. And she looked for like 10 minutes and didn't come up with anything. Uh 
And then she took down my name, my phone number, your name. And I was like, it's for the, it's a business PO yeah. box. So like, it's the judges, like it could be under that. And she's like, yeah, we'll have to look around and, and call you. Like, uh, that sucks. They put it on your silly, goofy name. Because I went there last weekend and I saw that. So I left it in the box because I obviously wasn't there during working hours. Yeah. That freaking stinks. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you got in the mail, though, Ricky. Oh, we got a postcard from Stacy. Whoa. Discord moderator. It says, hey. Hello. This is one, two. Was that one out of two? Sure. Is this from January 2nd? Either. Okay. Uh, hey, thought I would send some cards from my trip abroad. Sorry, Pissy, for not sending a B-Day gift yet. Life got crazy and had a trip to plan, etc. I have fuck? a... Today I fucked up from my trip. But she didn't send this from... That's the part two. Didn't send this from Milwaukee. Or... F- didn't send it from Portugal. Sent it from... From Portugal? Milwaukee. They went to Italy, too? Yeah. Yeah, they messaged what? us the day we got back, and they're like, hey, if you still need food recommendations, here's some places that I went to that was really good. And it's like... That would have been nice to know. Yeah, 24 I, hours too late. Stacy went, I believe, the week before you guys. Stacy is, of course, who was on our uh, bonus episode with the Hot Ones and for Pepper Pot Day. And Discord moderator if you're in the Discord, Stacey Lil Green. So this must be the part two. Yep. Today I fucked up by getting a massage. Where better to get your first massage but abroad? It was my birthday treat to myself after walking 90 flights plus 10 plus miles in Lisbon slash Sintra. We booked the appointment and were told to grab a seat set of slippers and wait to be taken back. In, on the rack, we saw a bunch of black Crocs. Assuming we take those, oh, we found no, our I size. Stole shoes. And the <laughs> massage therapist uh, watched as we did this. They each individually came to take what I assume was their Crocs and hand us each slippers. We could not stop laughing. Love, Stacy. That's so fucking funny. That's very funny. And if you want to send in stuff, PO Box with the Ottawa Noise six one three five zero. Typical uh, Americans stealing shoes. I've, dude, I've always said that about Americans. Thank you. We're always stealing shoes. Hmm. Every single time you're not stealing a pair of shoes. Never once Liar. in my life. It's crazy. You tell but... me you went to the McDonald's play place as a kid and you never swapped souls with someone. No. Ooh, swapping souls. You put them in and you're like, I can feel that someone else was just in here. Ew. I can no. feel their warmth. Oh my God. They no. run at a different body temperature. I mean, this is nice. Ugh. Well, and I've got high arches, so I... I was ordered. I was like, you know, that little bit off of the shoe. You know okay. what I mean? So, yeah, it's weird because the soles look broken in, but the inside feels <laughs> completely unbroken in. This is insane. Yeah, I don't like none of that. Anywho, oh. Joshua, would you like an update about our yard? Yes, I did get a couple messages asking about about it from oh people, people okay on Instagram. Yeah. Um. So, uh. I we signed all the paperwork. They were like, "Yeah, we'll be there mid March." So I called two days ago and I was like, "Hey, it's mid March. It's mid March. Like, what's the plan here? Just trying to like figure out, you know, going forward because we're probably gonna have to have Max go to my in laws' house. Sure, um, because she can't be. Well, obviously they're gonna dig up my yard, so right, she can't be running around out there. But then they're going to put sod down, so she can't." You mm. can't be on the sod for 30 days. Wow. 30 days is crazy. Yeah. So um, they're like, yeah, we're going to come March 26th. I was like, dope. Cool. Hardly mid-March. Yeah, Hardly. That's, what I, that's what I was thinking too. But whatever. At least we have a date. And they're like, oh, it could be later than that. You know, weather depending. Like if we get big storms, whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. Um, so then some dude came to the house the last like couple of days to like survey our yard. Like ask it questions? No. no. Boo. Got our ass. You did get our asses. We both were like, what? Did <laughs> no. S- what did survey say? Show me penis? It did not. Um, He has to do like a grid every, what was it, 10 square feet? As, yeah, as every 10 square feet or if there's more than two inches of elevation. He has to do it every two inches. Your- our yard is fucked up. So it's going to be a lot. This yeah. dude's got a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. He was there all day. 
Wednesday and all day today. Wow. Like mapping out our what? yard. So, oh, okay. so um, apparently we have a bee infestation in our yard. Okay. Slash pause. I don't, I don't know. They're in the yard. They're not like at our house or even close to the house. So that's a plus. Yeah. Um, but the surveyor was like, I'm going to have to like run this up the chain. I was like, oh. There's a chance they're like endangered sure, bees right. that they can't get rid of. Right. Right. So we have to have a bee expert come identify the bees. And if they're not endangered, then we have to have a pest control come and take care of the bees. And then, then they'll start. But they can't start on our yard unless the bees are taken care of. That makes sense. Sure. Considering they're bees. Yeah. How bees just love arsenic? Like, what's up with that? I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen bees in our yard like this before. It literally, like, if you... If you're not up close to see like what it is, it looks like the ground is moving. There's so many bees. There's hundreds. Seriously. Yeah. Huh. I hate that. Yeah. What if you just want to go run out and lay in your yard and you just start well, moving? Well, you're on a magic carpet. Our yard's not the yard to do that anyway, so. Correct. I guess you're you're kind of in. Well, luck. you don't know one hurry. Yeah. That's true. Mm. I use I've done it for the last six years until we got I, the report. And you only got like four was it four or five holes in your brain now? Well, I was I have been blaming it on long COVID, but now I'm really starting to think it might be the arsenic. It's actually short arsenic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> short term exposure to arsenic. Yeah. So that's the update. They will be coming to dig out our yard, hopefully by the end of the month. And yeah. hopefully the bees don't the bees. Cause, cause an issue. I don't even there's like no flowers in our yard right now. There's did, nothing. Um, we don't even have dandelions coming up yet. Did they give you a time period on how or time frame on how long it'll take? At least thirty days. Wow. So, Whoa. So I it's a two month process? Fuck. Two month process. Thirty days to dig it up and stuff? Well that's what I don't know. I don't under I don't know if it's gonna take thir- like thirty days to dig everything out. Yeah. And then put the sod down and, and then, then it's re- another thirty days that you can't like use it. Yeah, it's gotta be, right? I think that's what it is, but I don't know if it's like, oh, it'll take, you know, two weeks to do I I just to think, dig out and I then, just applied to have it or I sent in a thing to have him come test my lawn. And I've got so many trees in my yard. Like, mm-hmm. I have like six or seven. Um, and I was just thinking. I think like, at that point you call it a property. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there is too many trees on my yard. I But property. you can't take them down because they're just in the worst spots ever. But um, also they provide much needed shade to your house and to the street. Yeah. I mean, the entire one side of my property is just dead grass because they don't get any sun. <laughs> unfortunately grass is stupid anyway yeah but the grass holds into moisture and without that grass holding onto the moisture it goes into my basement hmm. so it's not ideal plant something else yeah we're well i did getting my lawn tested and where was i going with this i'm so sorry i keep interrupting you go on no you're fine erica i love gibbering jabbering he's more upset with me saying properties and cutting them off mm. i could feel the energy shift i just want to go lawn tax not property tax Okay. I feel like if our tax adjuster is listening to this, mm-hmm. I'm going to get Stop fucked this listening. year. <laughs> and I actually keep listening. Fuck you for raising our taxes by 30% because we got a bigger window, you piece of shit. Really? Fuck you. 30%. Yeah. Well, my house is also a foreclosure beforehand, so it was, <laughs> no, yeah. it was pretty low. <laughs> Yeah, and then we got a big window, and they're like, "Oh, I can see inside your house now." And you did a lot of work. We're gonna bump that bad boy up. If you're uh, a millennial and weren't as lucky as us to get a house or younger, this isn't gonna be interesting. But holy fuck, property tax! It's so easy to get it up, so hard to get back down. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. I paid less than I think I paid thirty thousand dollars less than this property was assessed at for the property taxes. And when I took it to the people, they were I was like, "Yep, this is the market value. This is what I paid for it." They're like, I will knock ten thousand off of it. Like that's still a discrepancy of twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's kind of fucked. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm getting it done. I don't know where I was going with that story. What were we talking? Oh, and I just think like how hard it must be to dig around all the trees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's gotta suck because you have to make sure they can't fall over without the support of their root mm-hmm. system. Like mm-hmm. it's gotta be t- like oh insanely difficult job to do. Well, yeah. but very necessary. If you're bored one day while they're doing this and you want to come see and oh. come hang out and watch. Olson and I will be eating popcorn. Well, he's not going to be eating popcorn, but we'll be <laughs> watching from the windows. So, um, so yeah, it's exciting, but nerve wracking. And well, I'm excited to have, I'm going to be stressed about one it. of our yards be safe. 
Yeah. That'd be great. Although I guess potentially mine is safe, which would kind of suck. I'm kind of banking on it being fucked. I mean, you're, that... you're a lot closer to the yeah. hazardous place but than we are. I'm also on top of a hill. My property is um, above others, as some would say. Hmm. Um, so I don't know. We'll know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Ours is the low point of yeah, the block. Yeah, ours is the low. Well, in more ways than one. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you it's, got that right, It brother. slopes from like the alleyway into our yard. It's like and then it slopes from the road into our yard. Like it's rough. Yeah. Well, we don't just talk about properties and yards and lawns on this podcast. We also podcast on this podcast. What that entails is us going online and find silly little lord. And sometimes the Italian. Do you have Italian roots? Or are you doing like Italian face right now? Oh, uh, I don't like when you say it like that. I feel like <laughs> I more ingrained myself in the culture. Okay, you're okay. So you're doing cultural appropriation for of Italian well, folks. I think what I'm doing is appropriate. <laughs> You're doing appropriation <laughs> sure. of the Italian people's Christian Roger Kleckner. Do the glasses give off European listeners? Put it in the comments. They are very cool. Did you get those in Italy? Yeah. I really enjoy it. Ten bucks. It's almost Euros. Oh, okay. That's eleven and f- expensive. Fifteen now. cents. US. It almost looks Eastern inspired. Can I say that? Okay. It feel they feel like almost like I can see like uh Fuck. A little bit of like the China inspo. Fuck. But I don't know anything about shit, so we keep that in mind. You don't no. know dick about shit? No, I don't know anything about shit. I know well, a dick about shit. Okay. Okay. First story of the night comes to us from r slash true off my chest. I think my husband's mistress thinks he's richer than he actually is. <laughs> How unfortunate. Uh, and my best friend thinks I'm a douche because I'm keeping silent. Hmm. Weird. Hey, I don't want to assume. I guess I assume that the person was a woman. First off, weird I mean, to be women called it can be douches. But I was gonna say I don't think I've ever seen a woman referred to as a douche. You know what that's I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. Like when I think, do dou- we? Are we still using that word? No, that's the thing. I. That's what I was just thinking. Like I don't. I don't think I've called somebody a douchebag in. A very long time. Only douchebags are still calling people douchebags. Funny you say that. Sister of Stacy Sal called me a doucher the other day in your Twitch chat, so. Huh. <laughs> mm. Maybe think about that. Sal, ya <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Husband in parentheses because we are not married legally. Throw away. Interesting. And please let me vent here. He, 39. Me, 39. Mistress, 29. Best friend, 39. We've been together for 14 years, living together for 11. He came and told me that he was in love about three weeks ago. I was surprised at the lack of fucks I had to give at receiving such information. I did love him, but maybe my love has always been conditional and it's a survival and it's survival depends on it being reciprocated. Who's in love with who? The husband came to the poster okay. and said, hey, I'm in love. I assume not with you. Okay. With the mistress. Sure. Just I'm in love in general. Yeah. It's like a real Friday by the cure situation. Yeah. Uh, I guess my love uh, my love survival depends on it being reciprocated because it literally vanished the second he confessed to me that he was in love with another woman. Ah. He didn't want a separation, but to maybe open the relationship or let his feelings for her subside. I said, it's over. It was like I had never had feelings for him ever. Sure. He was taken aback by my indifference, which I thought the audacity of this man. Did he want me to be hurt and suffer? I told him that he should be relieved that he didn't cause pain. Instead, he has been sulking since telling me. <laughs> Last Friday, I got home and the mistress was there, sitting in my kitchen, sipping my tea. Oh, I felt what? nauseous because, seriously, I told him that this wasn't civil at all and to never be in my home again or I would call the cops. And what sucks about that is she's feeling nauseous and you can't even like go get your own tea to sip to calm mm-hmm. your stomach. But yeah. Because someone else is sipping on your tea. Maybe maybe the mistress was nauseous. Ooh, maybe. Mm. First come, first serve. Uh, not in the case of this marriage. Um, I went to my room and I heard her yelling at him for not standing up for her. Then I heard her say something very curious. Why haven't you kicked her out yet? He was trying to tell her to lower her voice, whispering, Later. We can discuss this later. Wow. She left, and he came to me apologizing. He said, 
We didn't have sex here if this is what you're scared of. She just dropped by because I was working from home today. I told him that he had until the end of March to move out and find somewhere to be during the weekends. This morning, I changed all the locks. From now on, he isn't allowed in my place during my working hours. So if he starts later or finishes earlier uh, than when he needs... If he finishes earlier, we when he needs to, he has to wait for me to come home and let him in. Good for you. It's a real power move. I like it. But his mistress's words stuck with me. So during the weekend, I have been stalking her social media. That's not a good image. <laughs> Bad PR. What are you doing saying that? You are I, in the right here. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. Who right? wouldn't? Who are wouldn't? right? Let's just use better phrases. I'm already trying to figure out what this bitch's name is right now. <laughs> I'm trying to stalk her. I think the mistress, mistress thinks that my husband's richer than he is. Or at least that he owns my apartment. I think she also thinks that my parents' summer house and boat are hit are my husband's. Unfortunately, the loser hasn't taken her there, but has <laughs> probably been ba- bragging about his wealth because her hashtags are all about the hashtag good life. Hmm. I was telling my best friend all of this, but she was more agitated than indignant on my behalf. She told me that he was a scum for not telling the mistress the truth. And I agreed. I said, I know, right? But then she said that I was no better. Explain. I was no better by not explaining to her the situation either. I was dumbfounded, but she was being serious. I told her that it wasn't my job to bring back, to bring back mistress down to earth. My best friend got very angry and demanded that I give her the mistress's username that she could warn her. Huh. I told her no. She then called me a bigger douche than he is. I don't know what's going on with these people. Have they gone mad or have I? When did our moral compass go askew like this? Can someone tell me that I'm not insane here? I mean, it's not your responsibility to tell her, like, hey, he doesn't have money. That's yeah. not that's not your business. It's definitely not. Yeah, it's weird. I guess it's weird for the friend to want to insert themselves into the situation. But like somebody probably does need to, like, give her the little bit of the hate early. You know what yeah. I mean? Because for all we know, he's told this mistress that he's like divorced and that. Like, you know, we don't know how much information she actually has. So she could be seeing you as the bad person, like, that's, sticking around. That's um, fine. You can see me as the bad person. Well, yeah, which is, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, it, if he's just going to manipulate her, you should also try to save, you know, it's it's understandable somebody would want to, quote unquote, potentially save her from getting into a situation that she doesn't know about. But if she knows about it, then fuck her. Yeah. Does obviously that's a whole other thing. Hmm. Do you think first come first serve is how uh, nudist sex cults decide like pecking order in tennis? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what about volleyball? Ooh. No. Okay. But, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like I would just give the in, the information to the friends. Just let them do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that way your hands are just like, I'm not saying shit. Because you're going to be yeah. way more emotionally, <clears throat> like personally invested. And yeah, and you're going to be. You don't want to say anything that'll fuck up the divorce digs. proceedings or anything like that. But they're not actually married. Oh, they're not they, actually no, married. No, they are married. She's just not calling him her husband anymore. No. They said we're not legally married. Not legally married. It's like the first sentence. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Which is... Am I the only one that fucking listens to these stories? No, I was what also listening. Saying? What's going on? <laughs> Update! I had a showdown with my former best friend. Oh. Wait. It's not where I was expecting this to go, honestly. Okay. I did it. I had a showdown with my former best friend via text, and I confronted her about her non-existent support when I went through my... When I went to her with my woes. I think that's fair. I told her that she concentrated on the wrong issue. She should have been my shoulder to cry on. She should have shown up with with wine, ice cream, and a shovel. But instead, she called me a bigger <laughs> douche than my husband. She tried to Insane. gaslight me. Yeah. What? 
you are not the bad person here. Yeah. She didn't tell the mistress. She's a bad person. She tried to gaslight me, and I realized that she's always been a good gaslighter, so I in- interrupted her before she made me out to be the villain. I asked her very bluntly, was, insert her husband's name, married when you started sleeping together? You told us that he was married before. We all knew that, but we all were under the impression that he was married and divorced before you two met. Was he still married? Is that why you related to the mistress so much and felt empathy for her? Because you were her? She didn't answer me until the next day to call me a bitter and jealous bitch. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So she's not denying it. (laughs) This is the last one-on-one interaction with her, I have decided. She's been my friend since preschool, but now we need to go our separate ways. Not only to save us from future hurt, but also to save our memories together from the hurt. I talked to my husband, too, and asked him not to make the separation difficult and bitter uh, so that it ruins all the happiness we felt being together because we cannot think back on the third. We cannot think back on our one third of our lives with resentment. Yes, you can. More than that. Yeah. Oh, no, the 39, the 39. I asked him to make I asked him to take my dad's offer. The offer was to help him find a lease on an apartment and pay half a year's rent if he moved out with without giving me any problems yeah that's an insane deal yeah insane that's like deal. six thousand dollars plus yeah when i got home he and his clothes were gone he left an apology letter saying that he will always love me and never meant to hurt me with this so i've finally been able to cry my eyes out and it felt so good i've been crying since i got home i lost two of my closest people but this is what happens when we hit hardships we see people's true faces. Mm-hmm. This is my update. I don't know if any other any other major things will happen to make more updates. It is time for me to move on. Good for you. It's definitely like it almost got it did get glossed over in the first bit. Pretty shitty of the friend to not be there emotionally yeah. for yeah. her. Someone whose long term partner was cheat was cheating on her, and then just to be like not offer any. Condolences, that is insane. That is an insane thing to do. I forgot how crazy the rest of my stories are. Slash pause? Uh, slash hard to post on TikTok. Uh. R slash <laughs> am I the asshole hole? What's the H for? I'm pretty sure it's here. Oh, am I the asshole here? Yeah. Yuck. Or is it am I the asshole honest? I mean, it's probably asshole, but it's like Go ass to the page. space hole. Yuck. Don't they <laughs> explain the acronyms on the page? Probably. Sometimes they don't. Am I the asshole Am I the asshole for telling my friend that I slept with his disabled younger sister? Huh? I didn't catch it because I was Googling what Ada means. It's it is am I the ass hyphen hole. That's which annoying. Sucks a lot. Yeah. What did you say? Am I the asshole for telling my friend that I slept with his disabled younger sister? I mean, all that could be fine. Depend be- depending on a few s- circumstances here. <clears throat> John and I are both in our forties. He was my friend through middle school and most of high school. We hung out, played the same sports, did church, summer camps, etc. Basically, we grew up together. I also knew and spent time with his sister Mary. Mary has cerebral palsy and uses an electric wheelchair. Okay. After graduating, John went to the university while I stayed back home to work at my father's business. Napo baby, and go to community <laughs> college part time. <laughs> Mary also went to community college, and we ended up hanging out a lot. John and his family liked the idea of me being like a big brother to Mary. Mary and I ended up growing closer, and we began having sex. We weren't exactly dating, but it was a lot of fun for both of us. Because Mary's family is very protective of her, we both agreed to keep our relationship a secret. Eventually, her family found out, and there was an ugly confrontation with me and them. They accused me of taking advantage of Mary because of my familiarity with her and because she was disabled. Mary insisted she wanted the relationship, but they dismissed her views like they always did. Yeah, I mean, people with cerebral palsy, like, can have relationships. Yeah. That they're a normal person. They just have a physical disability. Yep. I guess normal is not the proper... Yeah. But, like, they they aren't mentally, like, unable to make, to consent to those things. Yeah, exactly. 
I think there, there's different like varying degrees of cerebral palsy, palsy isn't there? Sure, yeah, I guess. But, but I mean, they're in college. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. And she has the faculties to like say like I want to be in a relationship. Yeah, I don't know. It seems we. It seems very sh- backwards for the family to be like, you took advantage of her because she's disabled. Yeah, but I think this is a common thing. Oh, for sure. Where yeah, it's like you're you have a child with any kind of disability, and it's like oh, you instantly like coddle them and be like, oh, I don't know, assume they can't be their own person. Right. I mean, sh- there's a there's an ad campaign on TikTok right now. Uh, for uh, people with Down syndrome. Yes. I literally just... I, yeah. I just saw... I reposted it. That's probably what you saw. Oh, I was going to say, on top of seeing the little Nikki 2 information, I also saw that video, and I was like, that's so strange. I just saved a Reddit story about the same thing. Yeah. Well, not the same. It's similar. Right. right. So, yeah, people can make decisions, but if you coddle them to prevent them from making decisions, you're just going to keep that, uh, per- yeah. that truth perpetuated. Yeah, exactly. John was especially angry at me, even trying to start a fist fight. My father got involved and things eventually settled down, but my friendship with John and his family was over. I ended up leaving the area after I got my associate's degree and moved out of state to live with my mother. Napo baby. (laughs) So two decades have passed. I've stayed in contact with Mary, but only exchanged basic pleasantries with John and his family. Because they're still connected with my father, so it's just a courtesy relationship at this point. Two weeks ago, Mary came to my city and we met for lunch. It was a company event with her coworkers and vendors, but I still enjoyed seeing her again after so many years. We continued the evening at her hotel room, oh, and I ended up spending the night with her. Oh my god, what do, you, do we think they did anything? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 40 this, years old. <laughs> <laughs> this Saturday morning, I woke up to find a message from John. We've barely communicated for the last 20 years, so I was startled to see his name. Apparently, he had gotten around to looking at pictures at the pictures Mary had posted from the lunch and saw that I was sitting next to her. It was like we had teleported back in time to 20 years ago. The same accusations and same angry insults got flung at me. He dredged up shit I had forgotten about years ago. He ended up, he ended his message warning me to not spend time with Mary. I was outraged by his message. We were two grown men, not high school kids. How can he say those things about me and his sister? In my anger, I messaged him back saying that not only did I spend the night with Mary, but we slept together, and he should just get over himself. It felt good to to retaliate like this, but I immediately had doubts. When I talked with Mary, she wasn't upset, but she made it clear that she would have preferred if I just ignored her brother like she does. Yeah. We're still keeping our plans to see each other again, but I realize Mary is disappointed by my childish behavior. So, am I the... Am I the asshole for replying to John? I don't really think that this. No, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I guess to weaponize like, fuck you, I had sex with your sister is kind of like cringe. Yeah. Yeah. But like, if you genuinely care and like, or like, I don't think your relationship was wrong or bad. Right. From everything we know. Agreed. Did that title freaking get you though? Yeah, it did. Yeah, title, well, really. Well, what, it's one of those things where it is like, yeah, there's definitely situations where people who are disabled, or or even just the fact there could have been a bigger age gap. Yeah, and that could have been bad. Like, and like he could have actually done a weird fucking grooming thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and as far as we know, that's not true. But uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Say, yeah, I guess they never really give her Mary's age, but I mean, I mean if they're in college, college at the same, same time, time, yeah. So yeah, uh, there's a TikToker Wheelie Aaron who is in a wheelchair, and she. When she first started dating, she's one of those people who um, used to get their TikToks all the time, and now I don't get like any other TikToks. I think uh, TikTok just doesn't like their content. Be- they're a little aggressive and like edgy with like attacking ableist people. Mm. But uh, they had like a whole thing of when they first started like public, like dating and like posting on their pa- their channel like content with their partner. And like people would be like, that's disgusting. And it's like, just like, I can have a partner. How could you let them take advantage of you like yeah, that? Yeah, it's like, it's fucking weird to gatekeep yeah. people's choices like that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it is, it's really is one of those things where it's like, I don't know, you see, I guess in our head, and it's like so easy to have like, well, they have some kind of disability. It's like, it's the, yeah, that's the end of the road for that. They, they get to live a sheltered life and never yeah. enjoy any aspect of. Never. 
a regular lifestyle. That's ridiculous. It's definitely an old way of thinking that. Yeah, I think it definitely gets perpetuated more than a lot than probably uh, is like recognized. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I guess unfortunate. I, I from us here's here's a classic pissy playing the devil's advocate a little bit. I could see it from the parents' aspect of like raising a child that had a disability, and you did have to take all these extra like measurements to like yeah help them live their life. But it does get to a point. It's the same as like any child. It well, gets to a point where you have to let them go be their own free person, especially, like, Mary has the capability to be her own individual person. She doesn't need to be coddled in any way. She's capable of, you know, holding a career and yeah. traveling for that career. Like, she's capable to have a relationship. I And this is, could not be real. I feel like it's a very common theme in medical shows mm. of um, parents being coddly, especially, especially over uh, disabilities or diseases that are, like, more rare. Because, you know, I, I don't know how rare uh, cerebral palsy is, but the only person that, or the person that's with their children the most is them. Yeah. Because they don't have, like, other people that uh, are going to all the all the same events as them or, like, all the yeah. medical stuff. Yeah. And so they get even more protective like that. Yeah. Uh, depending. And obviously I'm pulling that off of, like, watching, like, Scrubs or Grey's Anatomy and stuff sure. like that. But I feel like that probably comes from a true experience where it is oh, like yeah. it makes sense where um the parents would feel way overprotective in that instance but doesn't make it right at all nope what do we think one more one more for the side or save them for the next i'm fine with one more let's That's do up to Go you for my it. man i would prefer one of them i would prefer a certain option in perfect this r slash relation r slash re- Yeah, some kind of retort. That's what I thought. R slash relation. French retort? Is that a chess move? I have no that idea. Sounds... I don't know how to play chess. A passant. No, that's well, obviously that's a... R slash relationship underscore advice. Wife, 26 female, said that I, 31 male, have a small dick during a fight. Hello, folks. Me, 31 <laughs> male, and my wife, 26 female, have been married for a year. And ever since that, we've been having a lot of fights. It's always an emotional outburst from her where she is crying profusely, telling me how bad of a person I am, shouting and slamming doors at my face. And for the last year, when she went into her emotional outburst mode, I would just shut down mentally and I would take and it would take me two or three days to recover enough to even talk to her. This is your wife? Yeah. Uh-huh. Of a well, year. This, this is the husband that takes three days to recover. From his wife yelling at him. Have you guys seen the TikTok of like, what do you mean marriage is supposed to be hard? What mm-hmm. the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Uh-huh. I had a similar thing happen in my personal life where someone was like, oh, I, I shouldn't say this. I'll tell you guys she, on the bonus episode. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get to that little bonus episode. She keeps saying I'm not there for her emotionally when she is low and sad, but how can I be there for her? When it's always an emotional outburst and pretty much telling me how bad of a person I am. I told her so many times, please be calm and communicate your issues calmly. But that is never the case. Her discussion of her issues start with emotional outbursts. Last night, we had a big fight and during the fight, she said I have a small dick. (laughs) That's an insane, insane thing. Unless the fight was about penis size. Insane to just bring that out of nowhere. Uh, that I have a small dick and that she wishes if she was having sex with somebody, she wishes that she was having sex with somebody with a bigger dick who can make her orgasm. That's insane. I was taken aback by this as it came out of nowhere. She also proceeds to say, why are you acting surprised? Don't you know you have a small dick? Life must be difficult with that small of a dick. (laughs) She's, oh my God. I hope we find out this. I hope he has like a six incher. And she just like doesn't like know that that's not. Let's hope so. You know, I, I, I'm praying for this guy. This guy doesn't deserve this. This hurt me so much, and I said I don't want to be with her any longer, and that I want a divorce. The next day, she's been apologizing profusely. She told me that she said all that deliberately to hurt my feelings and to get a reaction out of Which me. Which is a problem. She's, yeah, a, she's a little freaking troll. That doesn't make it better or right. good. It's it, you didn't say it to make him feel good about himself. <laughs> Who would even get so nasty deliberately? Two weeks before this, when we were having a good time and having sex, 
I just passed a comment in an amusing way that she had loosened up compared to the year before. Because it was a struggle <laughs> for me to put it in back then. And now it goes in so much easier. Hang- and then we continue to have sex. Wait, was this pre or post small penis comment? Two pre, weeks before. That was two weeks before, yeah. Ah, you can't. What is that? You just don't understand how vaginas work. Yeah. Your wife was a hot for you. Yeah. And you were like, oh, you're a loose whore. Yeah. What the fuck? Hey, you're hey, you're the one defending this guy a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. I take everything back. <laughs> uh, no, you don't get to. Actually, <laughs> Mr. Smallcock James Jenkins <laughs> over here. She is now accusing me of calling her loose when I said it in an amusing way, whereas she said I had a small dick to hurt me. I mean, I thought it was amusing. So, <laughs> I want to forgive her. She's been apologizing profusely, but I feel like it's done irreparable damage to my confidence. Yeah. yeah. And I can't see myself being intimate with her again. Don't. Lately, even before this incident happened, I've had so much resentment towards her because of her emotional outbursts and how rudely she talks to me that even I have to start. I even I've had to start raising my voice and answer back the same way she does. I already have so much resentment towards her, and with the small dick comment, I just want to call it quits. What should I do? Is there any way to recover from this? Go to marriage counseling. Step one, marriage counseling. Minimum three years of marriage counseling. (laughs) Pay somebody else's bills for a little bit. Break up. Break up. What about this seems like a normal relationship for you? Either of you. This sucks. You guys both are doing insane things. Just You clearly hate each other. Just break up. I do want to know her side of this, though. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. The fact that he had to bring out emotional outbursts, I don't know, 16 times in that four paragraph story. Like, uh, I mean, there are some people out there that just are emotionally outbursty, I guess. I don't I don't know how else to put that. But what the fuck did you just say? That's what I mean. See, that's what I mean. But I'm, I'm that's done. why we're I'm over it. Shells over here. I I'm over it. Genuinely think that maybe this that he's doing something to cause these outbursts, yeah. or that something else external is causing these outbursts. Like she's not just freaking out over nothing. Either way, it's not a healthy marriage. It's not. Oh, you guys should definitely get divorced. For There's no sure. repairing it. But I do want to know her side of the story. Even the fact that you're like, how do I fix this? It's, there's no going back. You no. guys hurt each other too much. No, you can't say you got a loose pussy and you got a small dick and then be like, I was silly goofy about yeah, it. We're fine. This is all chill, actually. No, Those when I said insane. it, I, I did a fake echo. So it was funny. <laughs> I'm having trouble. I'm not having trouble going in there. there, 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 there. I don't know. You're like, an idiot. <laughs> if the thing is, even if You're an idiot. you meant it as a joke, it, clearly that's not something you joke about. Literally, like I said, you just don't understand how vaginas work. And you can make that comment with, oh, you're so wet for me. Something yeah. like that, where it makes sense in a positive way. Uh, but that's something that she will always think about. Even if you guys mm-hmm. were to go to marriage therapy and it somehow miraculously saves your marriage. Uh, she'll always think about that. Just like you will always think about the comment she made against you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just something that you will never fix. No matter how many times she says, no, you have a big cock, Mr. Smallcock Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, it's, it, you're never going to repair that because it was said, both of those were said in degrading, hurtful ways. Yep. Yeah. I think really the only, the only way forward is get a divorce and start girth maxing. Yes. Joking will save you here. This is the rare pro joke segment on our podcast. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe we'll we'll pretend like you didn't say that when we're on the break. Maybe the circle jerk is all about joking. Oh no. Could be. I hope not. I do Boing. need to go get another drink. Yeah, do that. Huh? Would you like any? No, I'm all right. Did you know in Australia oh. a box of wine is called a goon box? A goon sack. Goon sack? Do you yeah. want to go get the goon sack? We got goon sack left. Get the it's goon still sack. the same goon sack That's from before. Right. You got to get rid of it. Am I supposed to tell you to stop? <laughs> that was a real uh, Billy, Billy Joe pour. Green Day. Holiday. Oh, oh holiday, holiday pour. Yeah. That, that Green Day lyric. 
I didn't Do say that that one was for time you. To goon me some of the wine. <laughs> I think you have a career in music. Erica, Thank did you see you. my in my TikTok today? Uh, no, I haven't really been on my phone today. Oh, you're going to love it. You're going to hate it. Oh. Do we need a live Erica reaction? Ooh. Hello, p- Pissoners. May- should we do that in the bonus? Pissoners? How have you been missing us Hello, the whole time? Pissoners. <laughs> Welcome back to the Goonbox side of the podcast. B- Goonbox Saints on Patrick's St. Patrick's Day, I thought. It's St. Patrick's Day! Uh, Today? No. Tomorrow? Really? No, no the Sunday. next day. Okay. <laughs> But it's the Ides of March. Which one of you fuckers are going to stab me in the back? Fuck, I meant to, I literally, unironically, this bit will still play if I just say it. I was going to give one of you a, I was going to give, have you guys choose which one of you got the present, and the present is going to be a wrapped knife, and say, Ides of March, one of you have to stab one of us by the end of this episode. So Erica, you're going to do a live reaction to a TikTok I posted today, uh, where um, somebody reported, the, the Hill, reported that Lynn Manuel Miranda and Hillary Clinton are supposed to be parts uh, working together to help a Biden re-election campaign. Uh, and Christian replied, I tweeted, I was like, man, it seems like they're really trying to lose this election, huh? Mm-hmm. They really want to lose. Uh, and Christian replied, uh, what did you just say? Just Pokemon go to the polls? He just said Pokemon the go to the polls. The musical, that's right. And so I spun that into a... That's very funny. I spun that into a fucking, I guess I could use this, eh? This will be um, easier, eh? Into a TikTok that I made. I wrote, produced, edited, recorded this in about two hours today. So here we Is go. that a long... So apparently the Democrats are planning on teaming up Hillary Clinton and Lin-Manuel Miranda to help Joe Biden's re-election campaign. Here's how I think that might sound. Yeah. yeah, you know we got a Pokemon go to the polls to cast our votes so that way everyone knows Mega must go and that's why we ride in for Genocide Joe cause everyone knows to not be deplorable, deplorable. in the face of the horrible Mega Republican. Thoughts? <laughs> it, it was something. <laughs> okay, so that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like cringe, hor- horrible over the top cringe. That's what it would be. Yeah. Uh, this is this is perfect time for this week's. Uh, oh, let no. me tell you about that circle, George. <laughs> this week's circle, George, circle, George, circle, George, circle, George. What the hell? It's this. Cir- no, why did it stop? I'm sorry, uh, circle, George. <laughs> this week's circle, George. If you're new here, we'll figure it out eventually. If you're new here, this is where we just kind of fuck around. We just have the fuck around a little bit. And this is a long running circle, George. Um, they this was partially inspired, I guess, by an email we got here titled "Circle Jerk," which is close, yeah. close. Uh, best comments on music videos. So this person emails in and says, "Hi, you can say my name, but I have no idea why you would, since this is only one point to this. Their name is Sani. How do you spell that? S A N N I. Okay." They don't give us a phonetic pronunciation. I hope you bring back the hilarious comments on music videos, which is a circle dirge I've done okay. two or three times. I thought that they were trying to pass that off as like their idea. No. And I was like, babe, we've done that. Yes. This is something that I have said I used to just do in my free time where you just go to a YouTube music video for your song you like or hate and you just go to the comment sections and you will see the most insane comments of your life. Mm-hmm. And they always have either the funniest amount of they always have the funniest amount of likes either way too many or not enough yeah um and so they sent us one they said i have some of tism i have some tism and often listen to game music while working i was okay. listening to this which is four hours of chill n64 music of course i got bored doing work so i decided to look at the comments and so this is one of the comments on a four-hour compilation of nintendo 64 video game music those gil Vicenna. My father used to own a video game shop, and he died in February. This gets me emotional, but in a good way, as he loved Nintendo and had a passion for games that Zelda music hits the heart heavy. Thank you for making this for all of us. Because why wouldn't you tell that to everyone while listening to innocent gaming music? Mm -hmm. Which is right in the, the, like, wheelhouse of just... I'm listening to... Fuck, I was going to say I'm listening to... Uh, the song of time, but that kind of is a fucked up, sad little song from Zelda. Yeah, a little bit. There is some sad songs in Zelda, but it's like I've never played Zelda. Why are we editor put in song of time? Actually, no, song of time is that song of storms. Yeah, fuck. I meant to say song of storms. Song of storms isn't sad. 
editor cut all this. Zelda's lullaby is pretty fucking sad. So I could see how. Doo, 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 doo. That's a Pona song. Fuck, editor. I could see how some of them could be a little fucked up. But why are you commenting about your dead grandpa on this? Because you're lonely. That's correct. Thanks. Also, this is dead dad. You're not even listening to your own self. I omitted grand when I said father. Okay. Thanks for the podcast. I'm almost caught up. Only a few episodes. Do you think I really did that? No. Go. Sonny, don't ever fucking email in and tell Eric. Oh. <laughs> it's just a secret between you and me. Uh, thanks for the podcast. Only a few episodes left to go to catch up. Hope Mercury Stardust comes to visit again soon. Oh. We wish. Clapping, we wish. clapping noises. One of my favorite guests. Amazing guest. Uh, and maybe Alluring Skull, too. I almost embarrassed myself. I'm going, first in-person guest, but we've had several in-person guests. Sorry, uh, Rachel X. Do you guys know Alluring Skull, their content? No, never heard of them. Neither did I. Uh, seemed like a cool person, though, so that would be cool. Best f- wishes from Finland. So, oh, of course, fun. I went through, and I this is something I started a long time ago, and this is a little game version of it, folks. I've got nine comments. You guys just have to guess if it's from one of three songs. Okay. All right. Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry. Okay. Uh, Fireflies by Owl City. Okay. Or Hurt by Johnny Cash. So okay. one, each of these comments is from one of those things. One of those one of those YouTube music videos. I feel like I need to look at the lyrics of Firefly real quick. Is it like a secretly sad song? You would not believe me. Did you say ten thousand? Ten million fireflies. No, he says ten thousand. Fake the, fans. In the first verse, he says ten thousand. It's ten million. No, he says ten million <laughs> later, or he says a million actually. I don't know. <laughs> don't quiz me on my Owl City shit. Because you will not have a ooh good time. <laughs> I don't get that reference, but okay. You're not a CRJ fan either? Who? Carly Rae Jepsen, a Amer- uh, Canadian sweetheart. What does that have to do with Owl City? She made a song, Good Time with Owl City. Oh. That's with Owl City? Yes! Uh-huh. Oh my God. Do we think Owl City's still making music? Yeah, and it's so awesome. <laughs> this is from Betty Rubble. Send Nine- us in a song, Owl City. <laughs> Send us in your listener submitted sound. <laughs> Betty Rubble? <laughs> the the infamous Betty Rubble? This is from Betty Rubble 5996, nine months ago. My you son think that's in law- 80 or BC? <laughs> well, one of those dates exist. My son-in-law overdosed and died in December 2022. He loved this song. I tried to get him sober with my daughter. Sadly, he couldn't overcome his demons. Zero likes. This can't be crazy, bitch. So that is either on. Oh, it's for sure crazy, bitch. Crazy, bitch. Fireflies or uh, Johnny Cash's hurt. I'm going with crazy, bitch. The only one it makes sense to is a hurt. Okay, so Christian is hurt, and Erica is crazy, bitch. And well, I don't like those sen- those words in the same <laughs> sentence. Erica <laughs> is a crazy bitch. That's better. <laughs> That's right. That was on Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry. Yeah, I was. If right. you don't know the That's song, insane. give it a listen. It is a wild ride. Who was just telling me that that band is coming to our area? We have to go see them live. No, we do have to go we... see them live. <laughs> I I don't want to. What if they don't play Crazy Bitch? Do... <laughs> they are going to. I bet they play it twice. <laughs> Song's so nice, they had to play it twice. I bet they play it. Keep twice. track of your own points. This is I from Lena Halt 2347, seven years ago. 0% nudity, 0% twerk, 0% sex, 100% just music. I miss the old times. 1.7 thousand likes. What the f- It's Johnny fu- Cash. Please be crazy bitch again. Please be crazy bitch again. So Christian is crazy bitch and you are... Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Okay. That is Owl City Fireflies. 1.7 thousand likes on that. All right. Wow. Yeah. That's too many likes. And they didn't even put 5% pleasure, 50% gain, pain, <laughs> whatever it is. Also, to think I can't shake ass the fireflies, you silly bitch. I mean, that comment's definitely like just like a shitty copy pasta that's like shitting on rap music, aka yeah. being secretly racist, mm-hmm. dog whistling. But yeah, weird to post that on Fireflies. You can throw ass to that shit. Pure music. 
This next one is from Grayman JFT three months ago. All right. Well, here's the problem, Josh. Just from username alone, I know what song they're listening to. Don't worry. Okay. As I get older, I'm 62. I recognize the truths in this song. Over the past two years, I lost my father, crazy dementia. Bitch, crazy bitch, crazy bitch, crazy bitch, crazy <laughs> bitch. I lost my father, dementia. Mother, died in sleep. Three uncles, two cancer, one COVID. Brother-in-law, heart attack. And cousin, cancer. Some were not much older than me, and others were in their 80s. Everyone goes away in the end. I saw a quote on a notebook the other day. I don't know who wrote it. In it the said, end. fuck, I meant to not read that line. <laughs> This is a gimme. Life is short. Time is fast. No replay. No rewind. So enjoy every moment as it comes. Do good and live the best life you can. Remember in the end that wealth, toys, anger, hatred gain you nothing. 773 likes. Just talking about how many people he knows that are dead. I mean, good for him having so many family members that... I mean, unfortunate that they're dead, <laughs> but good for him having so many That's the thing at one about point. having family members is they do all die. Yeah, unfortunately. What song? That's Hurt by Johnny Cash. Let me push that bitch. I hurt myself today. There we go. So that one was the gimme. That one was gimme. I'm not even kidding. Just from the username alone, I'm like, okay. How many points do we got here? I one. have two. And you have one. Okay. Round two. I think two. this is golf scoring, right? No. Round Fuck. two. That's not good for me. <laughs> this is from Sam PZ2IQ three years ago, edited. <laughs> edited i love this song because of a very specific and special person crazy bitch i met in the third grade oh. after i moved to a new state she was weird and i loved it no one else did like everyone hated her if you know what the cheese touch is from my diary of a wimpy kid this entire school had decided that she was just as bad and named a similar game more like bully mechanism after her are you familiar with Diary of a Wimpy Kid? I was really hoping someone on the couch would be. Is that in the movies? I don't remember that in the movie. Is that in Roderick's Rules? Or I don't know. I've never seen or read. Same. I'm Fuck. not well read, well versed into the we Diary. We were just slightly too old for that. I we think, were like 12 when that came out, and it's meant for eight year olds. I think it's in context, it was just like a cooties game. Yeah. Where they just picked on a weird kid. It's an actual piece of cheese. It's an actual piece of cheese, according to Aurora, which makes it more confusing to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Didn't help clarify things. Uh, Anywho, uh, I was in the same. It was bad, and I had no idea when I first came to that school, but I was in the same class as her younger brother, who I had a crush on at the time. So naturally, I was nice to her from the beginning, and like the second day of school, I sat with her on our hour long bus ride, and everyone getting on was being jerks, saying stupid shit, but I didn't care. I was just curious to know what she was actually like, regardless of what others had said. And about 20-ish minutes into the ride, she pulls out her mini MP3 player and earbuds. Then the first song she shows me, she goes, Thanks for being my friend, even when it might make no one like you. So, I wanted to show you my favorite song. Then comes on this song. To this day, I still sing it with pride and remembrance, knowing that it meant something to her. And even though we will never meet again, she will always mean something to me. So this was posted three years ago. 713 likes. All right. Oh man, this one's a little hard. I will look, say the Johnny Cash music video was on, that I took the comments from was only like p- uploaded like seven years ago. It's older than that. I know it's older than that, but I'm just saying like you, you can never really know on the comment dates because yeah, you know true. younger bands uploaded their shit. Like Johnny Cash wasn't intentionally like thinking about that. He was fucking 83 and dying. It wasn't until Vivo bought every music video ever and posted on YouTube. Hmm. Um. Here, okay, here's my. I'm doing a little bit of arm armchair psychology here. Sure, I feel like if they're being bullied, they're probably coming from a lower social ec- economic family. Uh, so basically, what I'm saying is, you're going probably crazy, white bitch. trash is probably crazy bitch. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with Johnny Cash. No, crazy, you have <laughs> uh, Eric. If you want to win the game, you gotta pick Al City. <laughs> <laughs> You don't think a third grader is popping out? <laughs> this is my favorite song. All right, you went Johnny Cash. You went uh, Crazy Bitch. I'm going Crazy Bitch. That is Fireflies, folks. 713 likes. On that that makes more sense for a third grade girl to be like, "Thank you." I this song saved my life, and the, and the song is about a fox truck above my head and a sock hop beneath my bed. I don't. What know the what fuck the, does that mean? I don't know what the fuck that means. 
Next comment. I love how a lot of comments are talking about childhoods and parents or relatives singing this. Just like my dad and stepmom used to do after a night of cocaine and beer, which usually ended up in a WWE match in the hallway. And lucky for my dad, he was a painter slash contractor, so he could fix the drywall the next day. Five likes. Edited. There was a reply, and then that reply got deleted, but this is a reply to that reply. So I don't know what that comment said, but the same person replied and said, LOL, that definitely sounds like a familiar experience. The humor in it all takes the edge off the trauma, especially when I'd hear their headboard moving at 3 a.m., followed by a slurry of curse words and stuff being thrown down the stairs, LOL, crying emoji. Zero likes on that. Five likes on the original. Just okay, dumping so, trauma. Just yeah. dumping trauma in the comment section of the song. So, I mean, we know there's only one song you're dumping trauma to on this list. It's crazy, bitch. It's crazy, bitch. That's right. It's crazy, bitch. We all knew it was crazy, bitch. All right. Three, two. Oh, okay, I would have been tied if I, I knew the other one was Owl City, but I just had to do it for the fucking. This next one is from Eclipse <clears throat> three days ago. Three the, days the, ago, the the Twilight movie. Yeah, <laughs> part oh, that two took me so long to get out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought you were going to reference the eclipse that's happening like in a month, contemporarily. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, April eighth. No Ludgate. April eighth. Everybody get outside. Burn your fucking eyeballs out. Aurora did. Where I don't know where we were going. Maybe Staples. But she was like, "Should we get see if they have like glasses for the." Eclipse is like, now nah, we're just staring at it. If Trump got away with it, I feel like we'll, our young eyes can figure Joshua, it out. I don't know if you should. I don't know. I'm joking. Okay. I'm going to look at a mirror of it. <gasps> is that better or worse? I don't know. I, if you look through glass, glass blocks some UV rays, so it's probably fine. I remember my grandma. Sunglasses. Idiots. R- real quick aside. Uh, the last solar eclipse, I was collecting a dead bird. Interesting. To test it for West Nile. Oh. And? I don't remember. <laughs> so probably not. But I was in the parking lot of the Moose Lodge and looked up. I was like, huh. That's fine. That's pretty ominous. Because you hate birds. Yeah. And I had already missed it. It was already like. Past. Past. Yeah. Eclipses do get a lot. And listen, I know I've gotten flack on this uh podcast about my indifference to uh like space uh, celestial bodies okay. yeah it's pretty fucked eclipses get, i'm just indifferent i don't say i dislike them i'm just indifferent hmm. uh it, it's pretty crazy how much coverage an eclipse gets that lasts two seconds <laughs> and you're yeah like, whoa All right, okay back to normal you know what i mean i do i've never seen a full eclipse i hear that a full eclipse is like uh not life-changing event, but it's like a thing where you do and it's like oh wow that's actually insane yeah it's just nighttime for 10 seconds yeah which we get every night for about you know eight hours at yeah. least <laughs> anywho i remember my grandma she's seen so many of her friends and relatives pass away eventually she told her pastor don't pray for me to stay pray for everyone else when i'm gone she had long been ready to go only found out she said that at the funeral Crazy live your bitch. life to the fullest with as few regrets as possible Crazy bitch. Oh, it's Owl City for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off. Were you still reading? No, that? I'm waiting for you guys to guess. It's got to, it's coming from a grandma. It's Johnny Cash. It's hurt. I'm going with Owl City. My empire of dirt. And that's an empire of dirt right there. Mm-hmm. Hey, I might be a Nepo baby, but I come from an empire of freaking dirt. All right. We are tied up. It's a very, very cerebral joke. I like that. When this song came out, I was homeless, on drugs, and then jail. I now have a house, job, and husband. This song and Clover Cage in the Sky are the two songs that helped me get rid of my depression. Are you guys familiar with that song? Nope. I love that song. I just want to send love to everyone, and I want everyone to know things will get better. We are in this together. I love you. Eight likes. Um. So what song do we think helped this person maybe recognize, you know, Cut out the dope. Get a job. Marry a guy. I Ah. think it's Owl City, but I really want to say Crazy Bitch. Crazy Bitch would be so (laughs) insane. It'd be so funny. I also think it's Owl City. You guys are both saying Owl City? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> That's Owl City, folks. Insane that that song like did that for them. You know saved I mean? their freaking lives. Yeah, I can't believe that song saved two people's lives now. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know this song was that impactful. It's a good song. It's a good song. If you like a rip off of the Postal Service. Ooh, uh, facts. I guess I can see the inspo for sure. First, sh- actually, I've never thought about that because I've seen the Postal Service live. You're a fake fan, and I could definitely yeah, see. The- got my ass with that one. <laughs> I could definitely see the inspo. Okay, last one. I tried I mean, to see Ben wait, Gibbard live one. back in 20. Who the fuck is Ben Gibbard? I've only seen the postal Fucking service. Fucking fake fan. Also, talk about fake fan. You're wearing a Taylor Swift shirt. Never heard of her. Name one album. Um, eight, Speak Now. Spark. Folklore. Nice. What year did that come out? 2014. Uh, wow, horrible. 2018. Closer. 2022. 20, you guys, no. Anyway, you're wearing this shirt, and you've never been to a Taylor Swift concert, so fake yeah. fan for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not rich enough to go to a Taylor Swift concert. I would love to go to a Taylor Swift concert. I do hear that it's a good performance. I mean, because what, the closest one would probably be Chicago, and I could probably take a PJ to where we live, <laughs> from where we live to Chicago. It'd be like a real immersive experience. Hop on a quick PJ to Chicago? I was, okay. <laughs> it's a private jet. I Yep, I got there, but I was like, PJ, is he going to wear his pajamas? I mean, yeah, yeah I guess you could take your uh, slumber party that feels like it's on brand for a taylor swift event like hey ladies it's a slumber party like everybody show up in your fancy pjs interesting you don't understand taylor swift things no <laughs> no okay it, 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 it upsets me a little bit listeners i'm gonna let you into a little behind the scene action here yeah it sucks that i manifested a bloody nose in one week but i haven't manifested the judges podcast <laughs> private the, jet yet the, the JPPJ. JPPJ. yeah it's elusive it's been almost four years now, and yeah, we haven't manifested it yet, so that kind of sucks. He it did, took he, bloody nose one week. He got this bloody nose, and he's like, fucking Josh. Yeah, well, and I, you know, we haven't talked about premonitions in a while on mm. the show. We used to get so many. That mm-hmm. used to happen a lot. And I didn't say it, but we did premonice my grandma dying of yeah. failure to thrive. And by we, I mean he, me. Yeah. And that was because you made fun of my grandma. I didn't make fun of I just laughed because, you know, right. failure to thrive is an insane thing to die of. For that to be like the medical term is that pretty so- crazy. That sounds like a, a like uh, a Victorian era romanticization of suicide. I, I, we're getting very off topic already. Um, <laughs> sorry that I started all this. I just saw today a political campaign poster for a county coroner. Okay. And all it said on it was the person's name. A true Republican, Blank County coroner. Okay. Do do we need partisan coroners? <laughs> no. Does that seem like a thing? I'm gonna uphold the Constitution while I'm checking that dead body. What? Actually. As soon as I was like, what does that even mean to be a true Republican? That's coroner. A, a quote unquote true Republican gives me like small government vibes. Not someone I want as the coroner. Yeah, I can't tell if true Republican means like Trump Republican or like a rhino. Yeah. Thoughts? I don't think that coroner should be an elected position. Sure. Yeah, that's fair enough. Or maybe you have some kind of medical degree or something. What if we just elect two? One from each of the only two parties that exist in the United States. No. And they're different parties. They're the Democratic different. and the Republican no. parties are different. They serve different interests. We don't have the same values. Mm. One month ago, Ashley Irwin, 1133, says, my grandpa just passed, and he loved this song. Did every person <laughs> that you picked their comment either have a loved one die, they themselves have died, or... <laughs> <laughs> I kicked it three years ago listening to this bitch. <laughs> uh, my grandpa just passed, and he loved this song. He even had it bookmarked on his PC when I was a kid, and I always thought it was funny to click on it and blast it through the house. Rest in peace and rock on and having grandpa. Oh, you should it's crazy, that bitch. It's crazy, bitch. Money freaking likes. Crazy bitch. Crazy bitch. Yeah. What the fuck was that? He's that... coming in the song about the crazy bitch. It's true. And that part's in the song? Yeah. Judgy listeners, this is the most you'll ever hear me say bitch in an episode. So cut it. Cut it. I'll give you a clean one. Bitch. Um, it's, I'm over was my, that a question? The quota. <laughs> I'm over my bitch quota for the year. For the year? Yeah. So you're not going to say that word again for the rest of the year? I'm just over the quota. Okay. Hey, call me drunk in the morning because I'm quota. 
maxing coda coda what kathy and coda is that hoda hoda yeah obviously it's a slant right what the fuck are I, we... I really don't Hoda? i've never felt so out of the loop hoda hoda <laughs> door <laughs> no hoda is uh one of the hosts of good morning america uh-huh. And she's just drunk all the time. It's oh. it's where our boy Gavin uh, Showman works. Oh, okay, is that his name? Gavin. Yes, yeah, it's Showman. close. DeGraw. Two weeks ago, Archeo 6 says, "Oh boy, what a world we live." This is such a long circle, George. I'm sorry, bud. Oh, that's all right. It's been a fun one. What a world uh, we live in. Down. If you're reading, I'm not cutting anything. This is all gold. <laughs> I love to get that. Half a half a glass of wine. Fuck me up. <laughs> How are we? Per- I wish the camera could see it. We're not just in cameras only think about it. But the wine glasses we have right now are perfectly even. I'm keeping up with you. Yep. What the? The table's slanted. No, no, there. I followed the meniscus. That's good. That your meniscus is all fucked up. I don't want to alarm you. What is going on in that glass? My meniscus is fucked. Whoa. <laughs> Oh boy, what a world we live in. If you're reading this, we're family now. I don't care your religion, skin color, sexuality, gender, race, etc. is. We're all from whatever sorrow we were going through and found this gem during it. It's fireflies. We are (laughs) together. I love you. We're family now. I know you're hurting. It's going to be all right. It may not be all right now, tomorrow, in a week, but it will be all right. I believe in you. I love you. 121 likes. No, it's hurt. Um... Did you? Did we both get it last time? Yeah, we're tied. Oh, you could throw one for no, a little. No, it's hard. Probably, it's probably crazy, bitch. I'll just push the button. It's the. What have yeah, I he become? color coded them. They were all the same color. Yeah. What? You guys could have played along. What? How many did you get right? I think we tied three we, for three. We tied more we've, than three. We've got more than three. I think it was like five, but still five out of nine. That's so crazy. That my whole point was that Fireflies, Hurt, and Crazy Bitch have pretty similar fucking comments, which is kind of crazy. Now that you do mention it, it is pretty crazy. I picked the three genres of songs. One that you listen to ironically. Okay. Crazy Bitch. One that's just a pop hit that everybody likes. Nostalgia. You can't shit on Fireflies. Like, it's just such a fun song. Okay. And then one of the most emotional, raw, like... Guy reflecting on his life, he's gonna die soon. His wife died like two months after fucking recording the music video. Yeah, just an old fuck who's just like, I hey, life was crazy, hey. Yeah, so much so that the original songwriter was like, Hey, you're a crazy but, bitch, but you now own this song. You it, the congratulations, you fuck so good that <laughs> you're on top of it. You're on top of it. Uh, and they all have the same comments about their grandparents dying. <laughs> well. What is up with YouTube comment sections? That's the circle, George. It was a lot. That's the, that was a lot. That was a beautiful thing. That went so long. Yeah. That went so long. Yeah. That was 40 minutes. We had fun. I'm sorry. It we probably fun. wasn't 40 minutes because we had a pretty long break. That's true. We have fun on this podcast. I Just like we it. like to have fun listening to lesser submitted sounds. This one's coming to us straight from our email. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Coming straight to us from our email from Natalie. <laughs> Hello, Erica, Josh, and Christian. My Hi. name is Natalie, and you absolutely may use my name. Love the pod, long time listener, and I'm high and tired. <laughs> I work as a barista, and I love my job, but I work a in bris? a few hours, so I'm awake and wide at it. Anytime I hear creep, I sing this little version to myself, and it makes me giggle. Every single time. Excuse my voice, Tiki. I'm not sober. Smoke it if you got it. Anyways, I love you guys, and I hope I type this email correctly, because I'm not checking this hoe. <laughs> Wait, is this... Who is this from? Na- Na- Natalie? Natalia? Natalie? Is that the person I just read Natalia. a bunch of... Natalia? Stories from? Very possible. Could be Natalia. Ooh. Could. I don't think it is, though. But I'm a crap... I'm a French pastry. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. Janet. I'm running out. I'm running out of this person's mouth. Ooh. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love that, Natalia. Yeah. That's very Natalia, good. Natalia, we loved it. It was fantastic. Did you really call her Natalia? I just did. Was that for me? It was for all of us. Okay. I appreciated it. Uh, uh any any criticisms or are we just No, it's fabulous. Why would we criticize Your voice was our... great. I think uh we talked about this, maybe it was off pod, because you were talking about when you were in uh Punta Cana and like you guys were all just singing like white people music, having mm-hmm. fun, and it was like kinda mm-hmm. cringe. And I posted that TikTok that was kinda cringe. Kinda cringe. We can all agree, kinda cringe. Just oh, maybe a tiny bit. It's 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 a little cringe to be having fun, but fuck it. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Let's yeah. just have fun. You can't cringe if you're just having fun, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh that was the listener submitted sound. It always prefaces and you can still get pregnant from the preface. The listener submitted story. This listener wants to stay anonymous. So am I the asshole for hooking up with a stranger while visiting my friend? Interesting. I thirty five female. I read this story. Invited to visit. Uh, I thirty five female was invited to visit by my friend forty one male Rob, who is working in a large West Coast city that I've never been to. Clearly, San Francisco. That's heavily implied. Rob. Yeah, come on. We've been friends since I was nineteen and have never slept together. Though there was one night of drunken fooling around about ten years ago that was never repeated or talked about. Love that Beyonce song. Anyways, he's been working in the Drunken city for life. a few months Drunken fooling around. and has been after me has been after me to come visit as a way to cheer me up after a recent breakup with my boyfriend of three years. Rob, we know what you're doing, old dirty dog. So but there's a twist. I flew up to stay for five days. I didn't get any vibes from him that this was a rom- that this was romantic in nature at all during the planning of the trip or any from any of our conversations beforehand. He even mentioned that there's a lot of guys that were my type in the area as an incentive for me to come visit. Well, he's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many guys. I mean, we can't go see the city. It's probably, <laughs> we'd probably just have more fun sitting in my apartment. It's just too crowded with men you'd be interested in. <laughs> when I got there, he was very handsy with his hugs and almost overly excited to see me. I got my stuff settled in to his guest room, and he wanted to take me out on the town, so off we went. Am I mixing two stories in my head? Maybe. How are we supposed to know that, Joshua? Right. I mentioned, <laughs> I should mention that Rob's married. I am not mixing two stories in my head. He's like, when his... does the marriage come <laughs> in? <laughs> He's on his second wife, and I've been at both of his weddings. He's trying to make you his third. I'm friendly with his ex and his current wife and have visited and stayed in their home many times before. It's never been awkward with us. They live about six hours from me, and his wife is back home while... He's doing this gig in the other city. Oh. He's Rob, doing a gig, all right. Dog. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The fooling around incident was not while he was married, and he never hit on me or tried anything with me ever again. Okay. So we are out at a bar and talking and having fun when some of his friends from work showed up as a group of all guys and one girl who is very openly gay. She, Jaina, 30 female, and I got to talking and found out we had a lot of similar interests and were really hitting it off. Spell it. We ended up just sitting at... What? Spell the name. Jana, what did I say? Jaina. It's probably Jana. How's it pronounced? How's it? (laughs) J-A-N-A. It's Jana. No, that might be Jaina. Only one N? I'm pretty sure it's Jana. Jana? Maybe. What what did we want to go with? I don't remember now. Jana. Jenny. Jana. The A makes a, sh- a long E sound. We ended up sitting at the table. We ended up sitting at the table the rest of the night talking while the guys were playing pool and darts. Couple of boys being guys. Hey. Throughout the night, Rob got a bit possessive saying things like, y'all are going to love my girl here and coming up and putting his arms around me when bringing drinks. I tried not to give him any signals that I was there for anything more than friendship, Mm -hmm. but he had always been a little handsy and overly emotive when drunk, so I didn't want to be cold or mean. And I actually just... And it actually just be me overthinking things. 
It actually might just be me overthinking things. Jana noticed and asked if there's anything going on between us, and I told her no, there wasn't, which seemed to surprise her, but she said good and then kissed me and asked me to come home with her. Okay. I'm bi, and she was hot, and I was kind of worried about what Rob would try if I went back to his place, so I said yes and left with her. That's so upsetting. I texted Rob where I was going then and turned off my phone. The next day when I turned it on, I had dozens of texts and a few voicemails, all from Rob telling me how I made a fool of him in front of his coworkers by going home with Jana and how I led him on and telling me that I could find somewhere else to stay the rest of my trip, saying that I was just using him for a free place to stay. He invited you. (laughs) I was very hurt by this as we've been good friends for such a long time. And I seriously never thought he had invited me up here for sex. He's married. We'd gone to festivals and concerts in the past and stayed in the same tent, camper, hotel room, etc. All alone without it becoming sexual. So I really thought this was all platonic. You have no reason to have believed otherwise. Yeah. Jana luckily let me stay with her the rest of my trip and we had a great time. But I can't help but wonder if I did lead him on and if I'm actually the asshole here. No, you're not the asshole. No, you, you didn't lead him on at all. Rob, you thought you were friends with him. like Yeah. Imagine, like, because he's fucking married. Yeah. Yeah. That's in, it is an insane presumption on his end that he's going to invite a friend who has been at both of, and is, both of your past weddings and is friends with yes. both the ex-wife and the current wife. Yeah. An insane thing for him to just be like, no, we're in, being invited to have sex with me. Yeah, no. That's insane. <laughs> the audacity of Rob. Honestly, name a Rob we like. I've got a couple. A cu- you, have, you have a couple? At least one. Okay. Do you have a second Rob that you like? F. Kennedy. <laughs> he just makes... I just think Aaron Rodgers would make a good VP. <laughs> Let's sneak a couple more stories in here real quick. Piss Josh off. R slash relationship <laughs> underscore advice. How can I, 26 female, get my perfect boyfriend, 28 male, to wash his penis without me having to nag him? Okay, listen. If you have to nag him to wash his dirty fucking dick... Well, pres- He's you're not a perfect boyfriend. You're not a perfect boyfriend. Your That's stinky my penis. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend is the sweetest, kindest, most caring person I've ever met. He's not. He's but his dick stinks. How- He's not. He's not. How many people have you met? <laughs> He's incredibly wise. How it's, many people have you met, Josh? You have to take care of yourself before you get into a relationship. But if he cannot wash his own penis, there's no way he's an empath. The water runs down over it, Josh. No. Now you got me thinking. I can't smell my own dick, so it can't <laughs> smell that bad. I know you like to think your dick don't stink. Roses really smell like ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Welcome back to the Judges Outcast. <laughs> He's incredibly wise and such a good partner to me, and just an incredible individual in general. He can't be that good of a partner if he's always giving oh. you yeast infections with his dirty dick. Now you're on my side. A lot of women tell me that he's the standard of men they hope to find one day. Insanely low bar. Mm. We've been dating. They're not smelling his dick, Josh. Uh, they they don't know that he's got a dirty dick. They've only dick. met him at wine and cheese bars. We've been dating for almost six so years. So the smell is normal. Got it. He's French. Hey, I'm glad I'm you said it, but I one. was gonna. Hey, French fuckers, <laughs> stop. I know. P U French cheese stinky. We've been dating for almost six years, and we've talked extensively about getting married soon. You've However, been dating this man for six years, and he's not washed his dick once. <laughs> Regularly is the issue. However, I'm extremely bothered by the fact that he won't wash his penis properly. <laughs> when I first brought this up, he said that he's di- his. When I first brought this up, he said that he's discussed this with his closest male friends, and they all don't pull back their foreskin and only drip a little bit of water on it. Okay. Ah! I said I'm pretty sure you're supposed to wash it with soap, but he said that I don't have a dick, and he would know since he's the penis haver or whatever. I did tell him that. I did tell him that bothered me a lot, so he would make it a point to pull back and dribble water on it and wash off the ew, gross stuff underneath, and then go, and then say things like, is this better? To which I had to say, yeah. I don't think he does it unless I nag him, though. 
It's driving me absolutely nuts because he is literally the perfect person and so good in every other way but this. I really don't understand. He straight up doesn't feel ashamed about it either. I'm really just baffled. Is this enough to be a deal breaker? I feel like it's such a small thing compared to all the good things that he brings into my life. So should I break up with him and his stinky little penis? As an insane insertion. Uh, so. <laughs> the fact that you said insertion. I'm sorry. Go on. Uh, when, when you Get have foreskin, better. you're not supposed to use soap underneath of it. Because things can get irritated. It's a very sensitive area of your penis. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to use water. Yeah. That is something you do need to, at the minimum, wash or use a very, very, like, uh, like non-toxic, like, very safe soap. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? You I can. believe that. Is that a safe and open space? Aurora just found out <laughs> on TikTok that you're not supposed to wash under a baby's foreskin. No, you shouldn't be able to retract Correct. the child's foreskin. And she said she saw a TikTok that someone was like freaking out because they accidentally did somehow and it fucked it up. Scared. Yikes. Them. Yeah. That does sound like a nightmare. Which, I mean, that's less so on the scale of this, but there was like a trend a little bit ago where it's like, I mean, you guys have a baby, so you know stuff. But before you have a baby, you just don't think about that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And like the idea that like you're not supposed to give a baby water is just like insane. Insane, insane thing to learn. The one thing that every living organism needs on the planet Earth, babies are like, ah, I'm all right. Yeah, but they get water through their right. their milk. They got right. little baby kidneys. But if you give them water, they die is a crazy thing. Yeah. They're the only thing on the planet. <laughs> like baby humans are the only thing that are like, I'm all right on water. I'll pass. Got me that milk. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Quickest, quickest one. Today I fucked up. Today I fucked up by giving my girlfriend head. This uh -huh. happened a few years ago. Me and my girlfriend were having some fun times like we usually do. One position I like one position I like is to give oral with her sitting on my face. Okay. No worries. We've done this many times before. Wasn't worried. Flex. Absolute brag. <laughs> by this time <laughs> but this time was different. She got carried away and dropped all of her weight on my face and chin. And I was struggling. But she was about to bust, so I couldn't stop and be a loser. <laughs> I heard I a crack, you have but to didn't feel like anything. That. I heard a crack, but didn't feel anything. Wait. She got off after finishing, and I tried to talk, but my jaw hurt a lot. <sighs> I dislocated my jaw while giving her oral. You didn't dislocate your jaw. <laughs> she dislocated your jaw. After a couple tries, I managed to put it back in place, but in the following days, it would come back to what it was and was kind of hurting, so I panicked. And wanted to make a visit to the doc, but after a couple days, it stopped hurting. Okay. And I started to enjoy cracking my jaw like you do with your fingers. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, like cracking your fingers. They're cracking their jaw. So I never went to the doctor. I don't feel any pain today. The jaw is just still disjointed a little bit. You can't tell. You can't tell while looking at me, but I can feel it and crack it as much as I want. And it kind of feels good. And now we joke about it regularly. Oh, well, so it's a win-win. She bust. You got busted. You broke, yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's a quick one. It's a good one. I just, you know, like, if you get, like, a dislocated shoulder, it, like, pops out easier. Yeah. It does. I do fear for his future. Oh, yeah. Like, you, I do think you still need to go to a doctor in order to help, like... <laughs> yeah. Because now whenever she is on top of your face, there's just a higher chance of that injury reoccurring. And it it yeah. can't feel good. I know he didn't mention pain. Yeah, but like, here's the thing: she's a crazy bitch, and she fucks so good that she's on top. That's fair of it. That's okay, fair. and he did hurt himself that day, which is a crazy you wouldn't part. believe your eyes. Yeah, right. Uh, full circle is where we came, and he didn't come, but she did. She did bust. Um, maybe oral should be banned. Speaking, Absolutely not. Speaking of, did you see Texas just banned porn? porn up? Well, yeah. We're going too far. Texas, fuck you. And the U.S. government, if you fucking ban TikTok, I'm coming for you. Call me fucking Ted Kaczynski. Oh, my God. Whoa. You cannot make you, that joke. I can't uh, make that joke. In a video game. You were playing the game Postal. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. We we can't make that <laughs> statement. <laughs> That's a, 
You're taking away my livelihood, U.S. government. I just want to jerk. I just want to goon max on Pornhub. I want to goon and max. Scro- doom scroll on TikTok. I'm, I'm an American guy. I'm trying to. When I'm jelking, I use TikTok as a timer. And then when I go over to <laughs> Pornhub, I'm goon maxing. You goon max post joke sesh? Well, yeah. Okay. I know that they're both about masturbation and like dick length. I don't remember <laughs> what they mean. Jelking is stretching your dick out. Gooning is uh, edging. Edging, basically. okay. And so you have a fat load in the future. So, you, so you're so you edging before you're... What did you say? No, he gelks then goons. A jelk? Yeah. Yo, Are we a gelk or a jelk family? I'm a jelk family. I do enjoy... I'm I, a jelk and I'm a gif, all right? And that's fair because I'm a gelk and a gif. That's fair. Yeah. You know what? Don't. I'm a jelk and a gif. That's horrible. Why would you say that? Uh, pick a lane. No. <laughs> Erica, where can they follow us? On the internet. At Judgy's Pod. Wherever you're looking around, we're probably there too. Uh, you could Not probably Pornhub. Not, probably not TikTok. <laughs> Joe Biden. Or like Joe Hyden. Send us your sound. Send Shut us your story. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Send us your sound. Send us your stories. Judgy'spod at gmail.com. And oh. Weekly bonus episode. Yeah, we got some loaves. That's what I was going to say. Patreon.com slash Judgy'spod. Yep. I was going to say that too. Whose episode is this? Uh, next mine. Week? Wow. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the thing I said that I was going to say about it. I really missed it. Bye. Have a great week. The Bye. Judgies love you. See you later, Pissners. Pissners is crazy. We had to have said that before. <laughs>